JavaScript runs in a single thread, which means that it can only execute one task at a time. But what happens when we need to execute some time-consuming tasks, like making an API request or setting a timer? That's where the event loop becomes very useful in JavaScript. When we invoke functions in JavaScript, we have this thing called call stack, which is where JavaScript keeps track of the execution of functions. And it can only process one function at a time. If you're familiar with queues, this is a last in first out queue, meaning the last function that came in will be the first function to be executed. Let's say we invoked three functions at the same time, the first task, the asynchronous task, and also the second task. Now out of these, first and second tasks are synchronous, which means that they don't take too much time to be executed, but the second task is asynchronous, and in this case, event loop will forward this to the web APIs. Web APIs are what enable us to execute this asynchronous code. These are things like the fetch API, the DOM API, which we already interacted with, and timers like set timeout. Let's say in this specific case, the asynchronous task was using the set timeout, which is an asynchronous operation in JavaScript. In this case, the call stack doesn't execute it right away. As you can see, it already passed this to the web APIs, so it continued to execute the second task, and it forgot about async task at this point. Now these web APIs will forward this to the task queues, which are queues that are specifically for asynchronous operations in JavaScript. And in this specific case, we are executing a set timeout, so this will be executed in the task queues. And once this asynchronous operation is ready, the task queue will notify the call stack, and only then the call stack will execute this asynchronous function. Let's understand this in a practical way. These are the tasks which are the functions that I talked about in the diagram, and now we are executing those functions one by one. First we execute the first task, then the asynchronous task, and then the second task. If all of these were synchronous operations, then in the console we would see this console log first, which says first task running, then we would see this one, which is this runs after 2 seconds, and then we would see this one, which is second task is running. But since one of these is asynchronous, and that is this second task, JavaScript will place these first and second tasks into the call stack, and this second one will be forwarded to the web APIs, and then it will go to the task queue, and it will free up the call stack for other code to run, to not block the main thread, since JavaScript is single-threaded, let's say this asynchronous task could be like 200,000 milliseconds, in this case, we don't want to block the thread and wait for this operation to complete, so that's why we forward this to the task queue, and then it will notify us once this task is complete. So in this case, if we open up the terminal, you can see that the first task was executed right away, and then the second task was executed right away, and only then the second function, which is the asynchronous task, will be executed once the two seconds have passed, and even if this wasn't 2 seconds, let's say this executes right away, so if you remove these 2 seconds, this is just 0 seconds, you can see that this task still is executed after these first 2. And that's because JavaScript prioritizes the synchronous operations, this first and second one, and only once it's done with these first and second tasks, which were synchronous, only then it executes the asynchronous tasks, even if they take no time to be processed, like they are 0 milliseconds, still this is an asynchronous task, and that is why this is executed after the synchronous functions here.